Mark, why don't you segue into that a little bit about local control in patients with metastatic disease, or, or, or it, are, are that treatment options for patients? I mean, I agree totally with Shreya that any time you can make someone disease-free, and sometimes we go to tremendous extents to do that, right? And, and is that an option that you often look for? Yeah, so I think, I think, and we've all said this, or we're all alluding to this, you, you walk in and you're extremely optimistic, and I think realistically optimistic. I don't think being naive about it. You're realistically optimistic. And if you're not aggressive from the beginning, if you give up at the beginning, then the patient needs to change physicians. And I really do think that there is a role for patients, if you have localized disease, you need to be aggressive with it. You need to use radiation if it's appropriate. You need to use surgery if it's appropriate. You need to use adjuvant chemotherapy if you feel it's appropriate and you have the data to support it. When we start to look at metastatic disease, if you really have oligometastatic disease, you really are looking to cure someone. And so once again, I, you're not going to bypass the use of radiation to the primary necessarily if you just have two lung lesions because then in the end you're going to end up with no disease. You've resected the lung lesions, you've resected the primary, and then you have a local recurrence. What did you achieve? And so I do think there really is, you have to take everything in a context and I think you do have to treat every individual patient as an individual and give them the best shot. I really think that if you're going to be their advocate, you really are fighting for them to have the longest survival and the best outcomes. I, I love sitting here on the panel because I can see you know the passion and the fire yes. saying we can make a difference, right? So, so Jordan, I, I wanted yeah. to follow up on this because I think one thing about soft tissue sarcomas is that we break rules of standard we have conventional rules? <laughs> no of, of standard so, so, solid tumor oncology. Yeah. Metastatic disease in the carcinoma world very rarely gets a lot of surgery, and yet many of our dedifferentiated liposarcomas who may have a two-year disease-free interval and then have a single site of recurrence. So yeah, they're metastatic. It's recurrent. But you know what? Surgery is still very valuable to that patient. And then maybe we'll do systemic therapy and surgery, but it's a very different way of thinking about many of the subtypes of sarcomas than we would if we were other carcinoma metastatic treaters. So I think that that's important. And the role that our multidisciplinary colleagues play in our th thought processes is always very interesting. We all have multidisciplinary clinics where the radiation oncologist and the surgical oncologist often will have as much to offer the patient, even in the metastatic setting, as our drugs will. And so the clever interdigitation of the modalities is really, really important to patients. I find the word work is a good trigger for a good conversation about prognosis or, or about uh, chances of, of response and all those things. So whenever someone uses the word work, I just say, what, is, what does the word work yeah. mean to you? Yeah. And if it means 100% of the time the tumor melts away, and no, chemotherapy does not work in, in, in soft tissue sarcomas. But if it means that it gives you more of a chance, that, that's, that's better. And if they understand that the chance is 2 out of 10, then that is, that is even better. Because then now we're going that extra sentence. I still have yet to meet the patient who thinks they're in the 8. They're all in the 2 or the yeah. 10. You know? and yeah. so, but that's fine. I share that optimism up front yeah. and frequently scan to make sure that I'm not wrong when, if it's a tumor I can't, I can't look at, that, at yeah. the bedside. Yeah. So